Hello, Internet. I'm here with another pet game update. Um, today, I would like to show how to add money to the game and maybe even something to buy money on. I'm thinking more pets because, um, I don't know, I've got some other videos in mind where you would want to have a lot of pets. So, uh, and I've made a breeding video po previously. Um, so, yeah, it feels like we really need a way to get more pets in the game. Um, and money is, is also you know, a common video game thing. It's kind of weird to have a game without money. So I guess in this capitalist world we live in. So <laughs> let's add money to the game. Um, and yeah, we'll hop right into it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is give the game any notion that money exists. Um, I don't know that I've... I've called out this tool before, but I'll do it again. This is called Heidi SQL. It lets you browse various kinds of SQL databases, um, and you can load up the pet game DB file and, and browse it. Um, and so this is a great way to just look through the data and see what's there. The reason I wanted to pull it up is just to demonstrate there is no money in the database, right? You're the, we've got a bunch of players. You can see I've signed up a bunch of times over the course of various videos. Um, and yeah, there's no money. We would like a money column here. Uh, if you looked at, I might as well pull this up. So if you go to Ben Makes Games on GitHub, Pet Game, I mean, this is probably where you downloaded the thing. Otherwise, I don't know what you're doing watching the video. But I do have instructions on how to add new tables to the database, but also how to add columns to the database. And I even have an example for doing money. So I'm going to do that. It's pretty quick, as you can see. It won't take us long. Um, but then we want to be able to spend it and add more pets. And that'll be maybe the more interesting part. So you can follow that thing instead of watching this video, or you can follow this video. Um, let's go ahead and add monies. So uh, these tables in here, whoops, I favorited the table on accident. Uh, these tables all have a corresponding class in uh, our code, and this is a kind of a notion. It's not unique to Entity Framework, not at all. Um, but this is this is this. I don't know. This the way they're tied together is thanks to the Entity Framework library. Um, every table has a class, and when you want to make changes to the table, we do it by editing the classes and not the tables. It's called code first, or that's what any framework in Microsoft have decided to call this. So maybe it comes from somewhere else. So was, I've used other um, database languages and or frameworks before and had never encountered code first until I was using Entity Framework. So in my mind, they made it up, but I'm sure it's an older term. Um, but anyway, we want to add monies to the player. So we just throw in a monies thing here. We say there's going to be an integer. It's a whole number. I don't know, it represents silver coins. I don't know. If you wanted to do decimal numbers, you could. I would kind of suggest not, though. Um, it's a really weird thing in programming. You may or may not have encountered it. Uh, but when you ask a computer to think about decimal numbers, it's actually really bad at it um, because computers are base 2. And so uh, what is expressible in base 2 as a fraction and what is expressible in base 10 as a fraction don't always line up. Like, you know, if you say divided by 3, you say 10 divided by 3, what is it? It's 3.333 forever. Um, well, the computer can't store an infinite number of digits. And it, you get similar problems like that. So anyway, when you use decimal numbers for representing things like money, which are maybe a little sensitive, um, you can run into problems. And so I would advise just using a whole number. And if you want that whole number to represent cents, then fine, let it represent cents. Um, I'm just going to say money. You can call it what you want if you want to call it um, whatever, gems, gold, call it what you want, dollars, I don't know. All right, we've added it here. Uh, basically, that's kind of it for, for what we need to do in the code to make it exist. There is one thing we need to do on the database side. So here we go. Yeah, I've got pet game. So in the this was kind of what the root of pet game looks like that I hope is, is familiar if you've opened up pet game in, in your IDE. Um, if you go into the pet game folder here, uh, for Windows users, hold down shift and right click and we'll have the option to open a PowerShell window here. Um, for Mac users, I think you just right click and somewhere at the bottom it will say open a terminal. Um, and then if if you have installed um, PowerShell yourself, there's uh, newer versions from Microsoft, you don't have to hold down shift for Windows users. You can just right click and it'll say PowerShell 7 open here. So that's what I've done. So however you get there, right click, maybe you have to hold down shift, maybe not, and you'll have an option to get to the terminal, PowerShell, command line, whatever. And if you're using Linux, you don't need my help because you already know how computers work. 
uh, <laughs> uh, but it's I'm sure it's the same. Right click and do something. I used to have a Linux laptop a while ago, but um, I gave up on that and installed Windows. Anyway, uh, what we need to do here, we need to tell it .NET EF database update. This is true. Nope, that's a lie. It's not database update. You lied to me. Add. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's funny. It's auto completing even here. And that's not, I don't even have an AI thing installed. That's just uh, for my PowerShell. That's just PowerShell. Um, so, EF migrations add. How do you know to do that? Again, that's Entity Framework. You can look up Entity Framework tutorials and documentation. They will tell you about this. I also have it in that README. Um, but this is to create now. A migration, it's called, and that's her asking for migration. I'm going to call it added money to players. That's a great name. Um, and I think it knows that name because this is the second take of me making this video, and I've typed it previously. Um, oh, and we need to stop this. It, um, yep, you can't build and run the migrations while the game itself is running. It's the same shared code. So uh, if you leave this thing running, this will fail. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes it does work anyway. Uh, but sometimes it fails, and it was taking a long time there, so I think it was going to. Anyway, we've made a migration. What's a migration? Um, I don't remember if I've gone over this in a previous video or not, but this is now a bit of code that uh, if you are working with other people on this game, they will get this code and know how to update their database. Or when you deploy, even if you're working by yourself, um, when you deploy this website up in you know, into the cloud where everyone can visit www.yourcoolgame.com, you want, will push this code up and have it run migrations so that its database is up to date because we're only messing with my up database. Um, and I guess I should, I mean, that's kind of I'm implying something there, so let's make it explicit. You should not be working on the production database when, while you're making these changes. You will break something. So you've got your local database that you're using and then you know the live database, that's something else. And you just want, and, and these migrations let you make sure that the same changes you made on one database are made to another. Uh, useful even by yourself uh, on a team um, and even yourself if you've got multiple computers if you take a laptop you know somewhere and, and but you've got a desktop at home or something that's my situation then it's useful to have these files um, so that you're you can make sure that both computers have their local databases up to date so migration super duper useful very common you'll find them in, in lots of frameworks you may have encountered them before but just in case not here you go so it has made this migration uh, this migration will get run automatically when I run um, pet game. That is due to this line here. Uh, you could also run it on the command line. I'll show you how to do that. So it's database update. That's what I was typing before because the command line was auto-completing it and I'm so used to it being right, <laughs> but it was wrong that time. Uh, so database update and this will run and you can see all the SQL it ran. It was like blah, 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 alter player table, add money. It's an integer, et cetera, et cetera. And if we go in here now, and I've noticed that I have to reconnect for this to come up, thanks to the second take, um, we now have a monies column. There is a refresh button here, but it doesn't seem to refresh a new column coming in. I don't know why that is. And you may have noticed, and I've talked about this before in previous videos, Heidi had been crashing on me. I did download the newest version, and it hasn't crashed on me since, so maybe they fixed whatever that issue was. But anyway, you know, it's free. I, how many people are working on it? Is it just one guy? I don't know. Um, it works pretty well, so I'm not going to complain. It's free and it works pretty well, so I'll take it. Um, just has a couple little quirks. So, um, yes, we confirmed that we've added the monies column. My cat is now my real life pet. Hi, Mia. You came to make an appearance. Um, let's go ahead and um, make it so you can get money. So, I'm thinking if we go to the house, we have the pet does some activities, right? Some random things. You can say, hey, pet, I want you to explore. And then that comes down here, runs this explore task. Um, if you don't have enough energy, you can't do it. Okay, and then, yeah, I have this to do. Make your own game. So I want to have something happen. Something that isn't just something happen. Something more specific happen. So let's say found some money. We'll call it found some money. And right now, oh, let me get the cat out of here. Uh, I think she statics the microphone too. If I, so I hope it wasn't a static noise. I'll listen back. Um, maybe try to edit that out if it did happen. Um, but anyway, so yeah, these all these three actions are all with equal chance. I'm just saying pick a random number um, from zero to two because computers are silly. Um, this three means... Um, 
you know, one to three would also mean one to two. It's very silly. The upper number is an exclusive upper bound <sighs> for silly technical reasons that .NET team could have fixed if they wanted to, but they left it that way. And it's not completely outlandish, but whatever. Anyway, it just makes things a little more confusing. So this is giving us a random number of either zero, one, or two. So we're saying on a one, do this. On a two, do this. And this means on any other value, do a nothing happens. And this is just a catch. What if I accidentally had typed 30? I, w I just want to make sure I get something. Um, some make Have some catch-all in case a mistake was made. Um, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You probably wouldn't make a mistake. But you can imagine maybe this is based on the pet level. Maybe higher pet level means you can do more types of things or something. Um, and you thought that you... May, did some math to cap that to something, but you forgot. So it's just good to have a catch-all um, to make sure. And then may also make sure that the catch-all, um, if there's a bug that someone, maybe a player could exploit that bug. And so make sure your catch-all does something relatively harmless um, so that if people discover the bug and start to take advantage of it, um, it's not like they just guaranteed get tons of money or some rare item or whatever in your game. So yeah, make your catch-all do something relatively harmless, or maybe just throw a message, say, error, the programmer hasn't done this, they made a mistake, you could do something like that here too. So anyway, that's all getting a little uh, off topic. Let's go down for found some money. So I have this something awesome happens, I'm replacing this with found some money. Um, and I don't know, you're not going to get as much experience for this, you're going to get money instead. That's, I guess, the story happening here. Um, but we're going to want to do something else. So we're able to modify the pet here, right? We're sending in the pet and we're saying pet, get some experience points. Um, but we also, oh, and sorry, one more thing. And then down here we say update the pet in the database and then database save changes. We would also like to update the player, um, but only sometimes. So this code's getting a little, a little funny on what it does. So let's change that. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. So, okay, here's the first thing. The first thing we could do is we could say, okay, um, I'll make sure to get the player, uh, the current player, so we can pass the player in and modify them, and then we'll update the player. But two out of three of these things don't affect the player. So we would always be saying, oh, database update the player, when maybe nothing even happened, and fetching the player when maybe we don't even need the player. Um, so let's not do that. Um, Let's instead take this code, and it's a little silly, but I'm going to copy paste it into these three functions. But the reason I'm going to copy paste it is because it's going to do something a little different. Um, also, for technical reasons, and I wish I hadn't done this now, but we're here. Um, if this makes sense to you, you'll understand why you have to do this. If it doesn't, uh, maybe I should even have coded this differently in the base game, and maybe I will, having now encountered this. Um, but yeah, we need to make these not be static, and they need to be async, because we're going to do asynchronous code in here. I've mentioned in other videos, and this is a good example, so I'll bring it up now. It's good to start, just assume that you're going to do your work asynchronously, especially when you're working in a front-end component like this. Um, this. These functions, I had to make them async because they weren't already. But if I had just assumed async stuff was going to happen here, and again, what do I mean by async? I'm just saying async. I mean asynchronous. Again, I've said this in other videos, but it's coming up, so let's mention it now. Um, this takes time. It takes a little bit of time to hit the database. It takes a little bit of time to save the database. And we don't want to lag out the whole website for the player where they might be clicking around while it goes and talks to the database. On your local machine especially, it's probably going to be very fast, very snappy. You're not going to notice. But when you do deploy this, it might be that your server is under a lot of load or Maybe there's just a bug that you didn't catch, and it's um, making the server work extra hard or something. You don't know. And maybe the, the end user just has a really slow internet connection. There's a lot of reasons why things can be running more slowly in the real world. Um, and so it helps to just say, make everything async. Um, we don't know how long this is going to take. We hope it's very fast, but maybe not. Maybe it takes a second. Maybe it takes five seconds. Um, so that's what is going to happen. Now, yes, unfortunately, so, and again, I should have made these async to begin with, but I didn't, and so now I have to do this extra cleanup. So I've said these methods are now asynchronous, which means I must say, okay, we're going to await for that asynchronous work to be done before we continue this, this particular code, which, don't worry, is async, so whatever code is waiting for do explore, it's aware that this asynchronous thing has happened. So the async, 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 it 
trickles down into everything, um, but it makes sure that your website will run quickly. So it, it might feel like a little work and look a little confusing, um, but it is best practice uh, for Blazor components, especially um, to be asynchronous uh, with this logic and just assume asynchronous from the beginning. So yeah, I, so I'm saying all these things by the time, if you have downloaded pet game um, already, I think I will have already made these functions be async task string and you don't need to have done this part because uh, that's really how it should have been and it was silly of me not to do that in the first place. So that'll teach me. Okay, so we copy pasted this code in, which in some senses isn't great. Um, and you could think of ways to abstract that out, but we want different things to happen in different places that are, it's going to start making this different. So for example, found some money. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to find the player who we want to give money to, and we're going to give them money. So let's do that. So we'll say pet owner equals, and we're going to go to the database and we're going to look at the players and we're going to find, and well, we can use find, we'll find the player that has the owner ID of the pet. And that will find you the owner. Um, technically, this function could return, oh, sorry, and it is a wait. I'm surprised that it's not complaining at me. Usually the IDE would call out, I feel like, um, when you're not awaiting something, you should. Uh, and it is possible, the thing I was about to say before that is that, here we go, it's, um, you can see the returns line down here. Whew, okay, so, uh, the entity found or null. So they're telling me, you know, I might, what, what if I had typed in some crazy number of a user ID that doesn't exist? Well, then pet owner is going to be null. And we don't want to try and add money to no pet owner. Um, in this case, we know, having written this function, we're only operating on pets that you own. So we know that this is going to be your ID. So we can feel pretty confident this is okay. Maybe, you know, but maybe we should, let's not, you know what, let's not be overconfident. That's what gets us in trouble. Um, so let's say if this happens, we're going to return, I don't know, we'll say error, um, pet owner not found. That sounds good. This is kind of a weird way to do it. Sorry, it equals null. Don't know if I would recommend this as a general solution, but this function is already returning a string that describes what the pet did. So we can do this. It is, again, this is a little weird. I think this might not be best in the long term. It's a little better than doing nothing. So let's go with it for now. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to think of a better way off the top of my head, but it might be a topic for another video. Um, let's make a bunch of different stuff pets can do and then have like a kind of a better architecture for how pets are going out and doing activities and all that stuff. So right now we're kind of fudging it a little, um, to get to the point of let's get some money. So we're already 17, 18 minutes into this video. Um, so, okay. We've loaded up a pet owner. Um, let's decide how many monies that will do. So as mentioned, um, so this is funny, from one to 10 monies, uh, except upper bound is actually exclusive for silly reasons. So this would be one to 10 money. And let's be a little nicer than that. Let's say you get like six to 10 money, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah, six to 10 monies. Um, and then we'll give that to the player. Yep, that sounds good. And then we are gonna wanna update the, and actually, sorry, we don't have to do that in this case. Thinking, thinking, it doesn't hurt. Let's be consistent. Um, well, that thinking, thinking was for me. A picture, a little spinner, loading spinner on my face or something. Um, yes, there's technical reasons I don't want to get into. So let's just update both because it's not going to hurt anything to say update the pet owner. But you technically don't need this line, but you do need the one to update the pet. And again, the way that the pet activities here are structured was like very bare bones. Let's just, you know, give you something to work with. Um, might be something that I revisit later for, for the base pet game code. But anyway, update the pet, update the pet owner, and then we'll say your pet found rather than something rad. We can say exactly what they found. Um, so this is a little C-sharp thing, string interpolation. If you want to throw variables and uh, values in the middle of your string, like we want to say how much money, um, A, you put it in curly braces, but B, you have to tell uh, C-sharp that you're going to, that curly braces, because you might imagine this literally means curly brace, the word money, curly brace, the word money, but we want it to mean, no, 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 put in the value, the variable money. So you tell C sharp, oh, I want curly braces to mean something special for this string, dollar sign, and then here's the money value we want. Um, and I don't know, I'll say good job, plus two experience points. All right, um, I think we're done uh, with putting money in the game. You're not gonna be able to see it, um, 
but we'll see it in the database. So let's, I don't know why I did that. Okay, log in. Um, this time, this video, I'm Ben at Ben.com. All right, so we can go exploring. Oh, and let's look in the database. Let's verify. Yeah, yeah, we've got the money column. Okay, uh, explore. Didn't find anything. Explore. Explore something noteworthy, uh, but not, not money. It's a one in three chance. There we go. Your pet found nine money. Good job. And if we come over here, I believe the refresh works in this case. Yep. So now our user has nine money. Let's make a page where you can buy pets. This might take another 10 minutes. Maybe not. Maybe this will go a little quicker. Okay. We got some money. Let's make a new page. And we'll just call it Pet Store. So I'm going to, so there is an option here for Razor Page. I'm going to choose a Blazor component just because Razor Page, also the Razor versus Blazor. Uh, um, but the Razor Page comes with more stuff on it that we don't need. Also, uh, we get option for page here. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Okay, you definitely want a Razor, com sorry, you definitely want a Blazor component. I blame Microsoft for this. They named all their things too similarly. Also, the Blazor component is called dot razor, but it's not a razor component. It's a bla oh my God, why did they do this? Who can say? Um, anyway, regardless, I'm gonna choose to make an actual component, not a page, because the page just comes with some extra stuff I don't need, um, the, the, the basic template. So uh, I'll call this pet store, right? And one of the things it does come with that we do need is we need to tell it some sort of URL that people will um, visit. That's not correct to my knowledge. Yep, GitHub Copilot is suggesting something nonsense. Um, uh, the real way to set the page title, by the way, is to put a page title attribute and we would say pet store. And I have been, and sorry, this page, what the page title is referring to is this here in the tab or in the title bar of your um, browser. If your browser has such a thing, sorry, that's a weird thing I've done. Firefox lets you put an actual title bar to the window and I just love title bars on my windows. So you probably don't have that, but it will go in the tab here, pet game dash my house. Um, I would like to say pet game dash pet store. Um, this is also useful, you know, when people are clicking back that they can see um, what is the URL, uh, you know, what site were they on? It, they're on Pet Game and they were on the login page of my house. So it's it's nice to to give a good title. And then for the what actually appears on the page, like in this example, my house, uh, we'll put an H1 tag, Pet Game. And if you've seen uh, another video of mine about the importance of uh, using the proper HTML tags. Um, we do want a header tag to identify that this is the page title. Um, that is useful information. Instead, instead of using styling to be like, you know, font size is really big and the weight is bold. Like you could make it have the appearance of being a header, but it, you want it to also have almost the behavior of being a, he a header. And again, I talked about that in another video, so I won't go into it here. Oh, and sorry, this should be pet store. Uh, and let's just make a buy button that just gives you, I don't know, hi, uh, care to buy a pet? They cost 10 monies each. And then we'll make a little button. Um, so I'll do button, uh, on click, and we'll make a function that's like do buy pet, buy, and monies. Um, and now we have to hook up that action. So we do our public async task, do by pet. Um, and we're going to need to do a couple things. We need to first uh, verify that the player does have 10 money. Um, and actually, we probably want to show the money on page. So we would want to, when they hit this page, load up the player and see how much money they have. So let's do that too. So we'll do the on initialized. So um, I've mentioned this in another video, but there are these built-in functions for any kind of Blazor component. Um, and if you start by typing override space, your IDE will go and show you what those things are. Um, it's the ones that in this IDE start with a purple cube. The yellow uh, tree icon is different. Um, so anyway, uninitialized. And again, there is a non-async, but we should assume async because we're a front-end framework and stuff is async. Already talked about that. Um, we need access to the database. Uh, you can see how this was done on my house, but I will go ahead and just type it out here. Well, copy paste is a good way to code. Let's, let, you know, let's do, it is, let's do it. Let's copy it. How do we get that DB factory? Gosh, that's a lot of text. Um, boop, copy that line, paste it. Um, mm, one of the maybe kind of downsides is the IDE. You'll just need to do a couple other steps. The ID says, I know what 9DB context factory is. 
But C sharp, the language doesn't. But I'm being smarter. Uh, Autocomplete, it's Alt Enter. Maybe I should show typing it too, because the flow is a little different. So let's do it. Let's inject. We want a DB context factory. And when I press Enter there, that's the magic. Um, it just knows to um, how to autocomplete. It does the same kind of work. And that work was adding some extra using statements up here. Um, so anyway, we want a uh, pet game database, a factory for pet game database, and we'll call this database factory. That name works. You can call it anything. Um, and then for more silly technical reasons, you need to give it a default value of null, even though it's going to get a value. This is an unfortunate side effect of how Blazor was architected. We just have to do this. Um, yeah. OK, Again, there's more to say there, but <laughs> I'll leave it at that for now. OK, let's get how many monies the player has. And let's put let's make a value to store this. We'll say player money. Um, and now we want to get that value. So um, and you can see how this was done on my house as well, but I'll do it from scratch. So first we get a database. So yes, yeah, the database factory for database. Um, it this time doesn't suggest the async method, but I should be using the async method. Um, ooh, why don't you like that? Oh, because this is an async. So silly. By default, it doesn't make it async. Don't know why. Um, and I think we do need to have that using. I think if we don't, is that true in this method? I can't remember, so I'm going to do it. Um, and it's recommending to do away. I think now, and I feel embarrassed now for not knowing this, but when this, I think it tidies up. Using means, hey, I'm going to, I want you to like automatically destroy this Thing when I'm not using anymore, but but that's already going to happen. I'm almost positive in this context. So the using may not be required, and the IDE wasn't suggesting it. Um, so anyway, let's find um, the player. We need to know which player to get. We can get that from the current. We have a, a current player uh, service, so we can also ask for that. Um, current player, yep. OK, so now we can actually get the player's money. So we will say player money equals from the DB from the players where, um, and this is referring now, so let me kind of walk talk through what's happening here. So we're saying, hey, look at this whole players table. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but I want to find the one where the ID is the ID that matches whoever's currently logged in. So we're saying where the ID equals the current player uh, info. You just have to know that that's a thing that I added for pet game. That's a pet game specific thing. We say current player info to get the player. And out of those players, what is the thing I'm interested in? I'm actually interested in selecting the money. That's what I want. So I'm going to say, from whatever player you find, pull me the money out. Um, and then this would be first or default, because uh, there's only one of those. And what doesn't it like? Not convert. Oh, we must await, because this is done asynchronously. So this code, again, we say asynchronously. Uh, wait for the database to do this work. It technically takes some time. Look at the player table, find the player whose ID matches the current player's ID, the current player, give me their money value, and I'm only going to find one of these. I'm expecting only one result. So first one, um, and that will assign now to the player money value what that is. So up here, we can say they cost 10 monies each. You, current, uh, you have player money. And then we can do a little something else let's actually so yeah let's do this we can say if the player money is greater than or equal to 10 right if they have enough we'll say all these things um else we'll do something else we'll say hi uh care to buy a pet they cost 10 monies each oh sorry that should be in a p tag it doesn't have to be but um well it should be and it, yes anyway uh, other things again. My brain like wants to go on these tangents. They cost ten monies each. Oh, but I see you only have money. Um, dot dot dot. Okay, so you can't do it. So there you go. If you've got at least ten monies, we'll show you the option. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Um, we should. That being said, um, sometimes things can get out of sync. So suppose um your user, and this is where you have to be careful um, about people cheating your game. Suppose your user opens up another tab while they're looking at the pet store, 
and buys pet over there and then they come back to the first tab and it still thinks it has the old amount of money i can show you that happening um we need to make sure that we really do know um uh that they have enough money when we buy when they when they say i want to buy a thing like they better actually have that money so we're going to do a couple things here. We're actually going to get the whole player object for a reason. So we're going to do something a little different. So when they say to buy the pet, we're going to say, OK, great. I'm looking up the player. If the player money isn't enough, if the player money um, yep, is less than 10, then sure, let's just get out of here. That's fine. We can do that. Um, oh, and you know what? We can make this a little shorter. We can just say find. Is a quicker way to look up the player. Um, so that'll look up the player. Find the find is it goes by the ID column. So we're just saying find how the ID column. That's how find works. And here's the ID to look for. So that'll find. Um, we can't do it if we wanted to do a select. Is the problem? Um, if you want to do follow on with a select, then you have to use where. So um, reasons to or to not to use find. It's a little more succinct. Um, it is possible technically that the player doesn't exist in the database. And again, this could happen. Maybe, um, you know, the user in another tab says, I'm deleting my account. And so you delete their account. But then they come back to this tab and it's still open. And then they go and try and buy. And now it comes in here and says, let me find the player. Oops, it doesn't exist anymore. So you could have the situation. So let's say if the player is null. Again, that's a weird situation. Maybe there's another way you would handle that. But let's say, uh, never mind, just get out of this function. Return, done. Um, we're, we're, we're not going any further. Um, okay, we found the money. Okay, if they have less than 10 money, we could maybe say something about that. Let's just return as well. We're not expecting that to happen. You might want to do something to like change the dialogue. You could have a variable that keeps the dialogue and set it to say, oh, sorry, you don't have enough money anymore or something. You could imagine doing such a thing. Anyway, let's take the money off of the player when we do this. Um, I do kind of wonder as well, since we're here, we did this funny work of getting the player's money. It's okay. I'll leave it alone. I mean, you could imagine, right? It's like, why not just fetch the player and then do player.money up here? That's something else we could do. But I already did it this way, and the video is already 32 minutes long. So let's just go um, and make a new pet now. So var pet equals new pet. That is true. Um, its name, it might be nice. You can imagine letting the person choose the name of the pet on this page. Um, because I don't want this video to take an hour, I think I'll leave that as a, uh, an exercise to you, the viewer. Uh, you might want to Google um, input binding, Blazor input binding, uh, and see how you can get an input from the, you know, have like a little input field on the page, and they type in a variable a value, and you and you save that. That's, that's how you would do it. So if you if you want to go the extra mile and, and let people name their new pet, I'm just going to call it new pet, which is a very boring new pet. Um, it also does not need to have an image. It's always going to be a little guy. That's the only image we have for pets <laughs> in the base game. Uh, and then we want to set the owner. So the owner would be the player's ID, whatever player we found. Um, you could use this way as well, current player info ID. Um, but we know we have the player and it's the same ID either way. Um, final thing, and we saw this in that other code, we need to say uh, update the pet. Uh, because, oh, sorry, not update, add. We didn't see that. We want to add the pet. This is a brand new pet. It's not an update. The database has no idea about this pet. This is a brand new pet. So we say DB, add a pet. Here's your brand new pet. Um, we do want to save the player. Um, again, for technical reasons, we don't have to say update the player here, but let's do it for consistency. The final thing we want to do, because well, we're going to have a little bug otherwise, as you may recall, we've subtracted money off of the player here. We said money reduced by 10. That's minus equals reduced by 10. Um, but we have this other variable. It's tracking player money. And that's the one we use on screen to say how much money that player has. So at the very end, after we're all done, let's say player money equals the player's money, that this updated value. Um, and you could have done it two ways. You could have done also here just said minus equals 10. That's a valid way to do it. Um, I'll go ahead and throw it down here. Do whichever one you like. Um, I think this should work. Ooh, except for one thing, because of the silly bug I still haven't fixed, um, where I get logged out when I manually navigate to a page, we should have a way to link. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing to add anyway. 
we should have a way to uh, let the player buy new pets. So let's put a little list of helpful links at the bottom and we'll link them to the pet store. Oops, sorry. Say visit the pet store. So let's add that link to my house. Um, sorry, yeah, I went back to the my house page and now they'll have a quick way to get to their house. Let's reload. Visit the pet store. Oh, we don't have enough money, I don't think. Well, let's see. Oh, but I see you only have nine, right? That makes sense. We know we only got nine. Uh, oh, perfect. Got nine. Visit the pet store. You have 18. Buy 10 money. Uh, or, sorry, buy for 10 money. Okay, now eight. Let's go back. Oh, we've got a new pet. Perfect. It's working. And we could explore. And uh, four. Nope. Come on. Yeah, 10 money. Oh, perfect. Beautiful. Buy me another pet. See, we only have eight. Right, yes, that's true. I was like, why not 10? But right, I had 8 left over, and then I added 10. Perfect. Um, so yeah, that all seems to be working. Sorry, and I didn't. I was pressing the back button to go back to my home page. Um, but probably there should be a link here that says, go back to my house, or maybe you build out a whole menu. If you know some uh, CSS, especially, you might be able to start building a, like a drop-down menu here to go to other locations. Maybe I'll do that in another video. But oh my goodness, this video has been long enough, 40 minutes. Uh, but your pets can now earn money, and you can use that money to buy new pets. So there you go. Um, if you would like to add other things to your pet game, I am putting all of these videos into a playlist. So you can check out that playlist. There will be a description in the link, or maybe somewhere on screen right about now. Um, and if you want to get the code for this, if you didn't want to follow along with all this madness of adding asyncs and whatever the hell else, um, the source code for, uh, you know, what resulted from this video is available, and there's a link to that in the description as well. Um, if you've got ideas for other things you would like to see in these videos, please let me know. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you make an awesome game. Also, let me know if you do that, because I would love to see it. Um, making games is awesome. Anyway, have fun. Goodbye.